I found this article interesting and I wanted to go through it on my channel. Now, before I start, I always say this when I'm looking at one individual study, at least I try to, is that one study does not make a relationship. <laughs> well, it might correlate, but it doesn't create a cause, okay? Causal evidence is very hard to prove and you need the preponderance of evidence for that. You need most of the evidence and in large quantities to point to something. That's how we know that smoking, we can pretty much say that smoking causes lung disease is because there's so much evidence for this. Same with saturated fat and cardiovascular disease. Even some, even though some people like to deny the evidence, we have so much evidence, the preponderance of evidence pointing towards the fact that this is the cause. Um, so I'm just going to look at one study, but I found it interesting. There is a link potentially of meat to multiple sclerosis and inflammation. So this was done in Australia. Uh, it's only 49 people. Again, not a very big study, but it was actually a quite long study. And it's saying eating more meat, having less carbohydrate digesting bacteria in the gut and more pro-inflammatory immune cells in the blood, all linked to multiple sclerosis, an international team has found. Increasingly, evidence suggests that bacteria living in our gut can affect our immune system and what we eat can affect the bacteria in our guts. So um, they're linking MS potentially to diet because it's present in mid-latitudes, including the United States and Australia. So anyway, they looked at 49 people and actually, let's just go over this part just in case people don't know what MS is, but it's an autoimmune disease. So the body is attacking itself in which um, the body attacks the insulation surrounding its nerves. When the insulation is damaged enough, the nerves begin to misfire and malfunction like wires with frayed insulation. But what triggers the body to attack the insulation in the nervous system in the first place is unknown. So this is again, University of Sydney, Faculty of Medicine and Health in collaboration with the University of Kentucky, uh, Connecticut, Connecticut. <laughs> sorry guys, <laughs> I need to brush up on my uh, American states um school of medicine to study the gut microbiome in 25 ms patients with 24 healthy controls okay so they were split in two groups this is the first study using an integrated approach to an analyze the interplay between diet microbiome gut microbiome and the immune system and their contribution to ms so they found a number of gut bacteria associated with MS and severity of disability of MS patients. They also found increased autoimmune markers and signature metabolites in MS. But what is really interesting is how these systems connect with each other. And that, I guess that's where this multi-omics approach comes in. The strongest systemic linkage the researchers found invo was involved eating meat. Their analysis linked higher meat consumption to a decrease in the population of bacteroides. Okay, you're going to have to help me out with this one. Tetiodeomicron in people's gut ecology. This bacteria is associated with digesting carbohydrates from vegetables. It was found across all participants, including the healthy control group. Higher meat consumption, which was observed in MS patients, was also linked to an increase in T helper 17 cells. T helper cells are part of your immune system, right? They help get rid of things in your body that you don't want in there. And an increase in S adenosyl L methionine in their blood. I'm guessing this is an inflammatory marker. I would have to Google it, you guys. In the cohort of subjects, the researchers studied the healthy control group averaged just one ounce of meat daily, okay? The healthy control group, one ounce of meat daily, 28 grams. That is very small. And um, it's very important to note that this does not include fish, okay? So compared to those with MS who averaged more than double 
at two and a half ounces daily. So we're not talking about a lot of meat, guys. We're talking about one ounce being potentially beneficial or helpful, maybe. And over one ounce, one ounce, like the size of, I think they say, what, like a deck of card? That's three ounces, actually, I think. One ounce is even less than that. So (laughs) one ounce of meat, not including fish or seafood, but including red and white meat, okay? Chicken, too. Associate professor said the findings, while novel, were unexpected. It's increasingly suggested that meat should be eaten in moderation for several reasons, including that it's high in saturated fat and that it can promote the production of gut bacteria of, um, by the gut bacteria of, by sub, of substances with potentially detrimental effects on the health. So it was a six-month-long study, involved three years of research, And a direct relationship between eating meat, the gut microbiome, peripheral immune profile, and the other factors was not shown. However, the pattern of all the factors was suggestive that in MS, something goes wrong with people's gut bacteria that dissolves them. This, (laughs) oh my God, it's early, guys. I'm sorry. I didn't sleep very well. Dissociates them from the immune system, leading to heightened T helper 17 cells and autoimmune attacks on the nervous system, and it tends to be associated with meat eating. So that's interesting. Again, one study, but I have, and Dr. McDougall has a really good talk on this, and I need to dig it up, but he talks about how meat getting into your blood and body, like uh, proteins, um can cause more autoimmunity because our body sees it more like like itself, right? And if it attacks it because it's not supposed to be in the blood, it's slightly different, right? It attacks it, then it can develop an autoimmunity to its own cells because they're so alike. And I guess you would first need the leaky leaky gut in the first place and whatever causes that, obviously different things, right? But just an interesting correlation for one study. I'm going to repeat it if I get any comments saying, this is just one study. Seriously, (laughs) I said it's one study. It does not make a causation. It is one study that correlates it. And very interesting to me. 